Hey guys, I'm from Breaking Code, and for today, the problem that we have brought is Pydlandian gold coins. Uh, it's a problem from the medium section of Code Chef, and the pro the link to the problem is in the description. So please have a look at the problem, and then if you don't get it, come watch this video. So this problem is from the median section of Code Chef, but if you know dynamic programming well, this won't uh, you won't find it that difficult. So let us see what the problem is. Uh, you have n number of uh, coins and what you could do is uh, you could replace these n number of coins uh, with uh, three three set of coins that is you could replace n with n by 2 plus n by 3 plus n by 4 number of coins so uh, what you could do is if suppose you have 8 coins then you could replace 8 with n by 8 by 2 that is 8 divided by 2 is 4 8 divided by 3 uh, if you do integer division then 8 divided by 3 you get 2 and uh, 8 divided by 4 is 2 so you could replace the 8 coins with uh, 4 plus uh, 2 plus 2 coins and you have 8 coins or you could keep the original 8 coins as it is whichever is the max thing uh, you, you do that and the goal is to find the maximum number of coins that you could have in the end. So suppose you have seven coins. So uh, and if you choose to exchange those coins, then you could get seven divided by two. If you do an integer division, you get three plus seven divided by three, you could get two and seven divided by four would get you one. So you could exchange these seven coins for six coins, which is obviously a loss. So uh, what you could do is you could actually keep these coins or uh, these seven coins or you could exchange them for six coins and the aim of the problem is to calculate how much the maximum number of coins you could have in the end this problem is from the medium section of code chef and uh, you might you guys might have tried some tech uh, some of your logics and you might have failed uh, this problem can be easily solved if you know the basics of dynamic programming so before going through uh, the rest of the tutorial please uh, if you don't know, please go through the basics of dynamic programming. Uh, we have some awesome videos for you. Uh, the links of the videos are in the description. Uh, they explain dynamic programming very well. Or you could go through the CodeChef, tuto uh, CodeChef editorials and they are pretty good as well. So once you go through them, uh, you could come back and uh, we could go on with this. Uh, so let me give you a brief introduction of dynamic programming is what we do in dynamic programming is uh, we, we have a problem and then we divide the problem into a number of sub problems and then we solve each of the sub problem and uh, then we get the solution to the main problem. So uh, there are two methods that we use in dynamic programming. Uh, they are iteration or recursion. In recursion, you, go, you give uh, recursive calls uh, to, the same, uh, to the same function and in iteration what we do is uh, you form an array and every element is updated as you go tra traversing the array. Uh, we'll use iteration to solve this problem. Let me write the logic. What we do is, uh, suppose you have been given uh, n, n, the number n as the input. Uh, you take an array, uh, let's call it dp. For the rest of the tutorial, we'll call this dp. And you take an array of n plus 1 elements. And uh, what we do is we traverse the array. So what happens is we take a for loop for i is equal to 0, i less than equal to n, i plus plus. And what we do is uh, we take uh, okay, so uh, let uh, let me write this code and then we'll ex then I'll explain it. Uh, let's take an example. Uh, suppose we have twelve coins. So uh, let's take an example. Suppose we take n is equal n is equal to twelve here. Uh, so we take an array dp of 13 elements okay and uh, then what we do is uh, so let's write down the indices so this is one. Okay. so what we do is we initialize uh, every element uh, with its index so uh, we initialize the zero element with zero So, uh, so this gives us a choice to select uh, the given element or 
the select the max between the given element and uh, the element if you do the exchange and you get that element divided by 2 divided plus the element divided by 3 plus the element divided by 4 okay uh, so uh, let's get on with it uh, so uh, here's here's the uh, if we see the code we uh, let's start with i is equal to 0 we see dp of 0 would be equal to max of dp of 0 plus dp of 0 divided by 2 plus dp of 0 divided by 3 plus dp of 0 divided by 4 uh, which is all uh, everything is equal to 0 so we get max of 0 or 0 which is 0 so 0 remains as it is uh, let's see uh, now we increment i to 1 uh, dp of 1 will be equal to uh, uh, will be equal to max of dp of 1 or dp of 1 divided by 2 uh, which is 0 plus dp of 0 plus dp of 0 so that will be equal to dp of max of 1 or 0 so which is 1 we keep it as it is so when uh, next when i becomes 2 uh, we get max of dp of 2 or dp of this will become 1 this will become 0 and this will become one, uh, 0 so we get dp of 1 plus dp of 0 plus dp of 0 which will, which will give you 1 or 2 so max of that is 2 so 2 remains as it is now if we take 3 uh, then we get max of dp of 3 which is 3 and dp of i divided by 2 would give 1 this would give you 1 and this would give you 0 so this becomes dp of uh, dp of 1 plus dp of 1 plus dp of 0 which would give you dp of uh, which would give you 2 and we have 3 here so max of that is 3 so this remains at, as it is so if you continue like this uh, like mostly you get the uh, you get the same number as max but uh, let's see let's take the example of 7 when i is equal to 7 uh, you uh, you see that uh, dp of i is 7 and uh, dp of i divided by 2 would give you 3 and i divided by 3 would give you 2 i divided by 4 would give you 1 so dp of 2 plus 3 plus 1 which is 6 and dp of i is 7 so you get to choose between 7 and 6 uh, which is you could replace 7 with 6 but then that won't make any sense so you get 7 here and nothing has changed till we reach 12 so what happens with 12 we'll see what happens when you take i is equal to 12 uh, what happens is uh, you get max of uh, dp of i is 12 and you get an uh, you get an option to exchange these so dp of i uh, 12 by 2 would give you 6 12 by 3 would give you 4 and 12 by 4 would give you 3 so you get 12 or 6 plus 4 plus 3 which gives you 13 so you get an, you get an option to ch exchange 12 for 13 which is obviously a great choice so what happens is for 12 you get 13 coins so that's so we take the deal and we exchange 12 coins for 13 coins uh, this is how uh, this is how you get the maximum number of coins in this problem so what we do here is we take the maximum of this uh, dp of i and uh, this sum that is dp of i by 2 plus dp of i by 3 plus dp of i by 4 so uh, you guys may think that why do you need an array dp like uh, you could take the value n and then you could check if uh, the value of n is greater than n divided by 2 plus n divided by 3 plus n divided by 4 so uh, let, let me tell you why it's important to use dp in this problem so uh, let me take an example suppose we have n is equal to uh, 24 here so by this logic uh, we could either keep 24 or we could have a sum of uh, 24 divided by 2 is 12 plus uh, uh, 24 divided by 3 is 8 and 24 divided by 4 is 6 so if we if we do this without using an array uh, we saw that 12 could be either written as 12 or 12 could be exchanged by 13 also so if we have that thing if we if we don't use this array uh, we'll actually have to uh, use this 12 and not 13 by using 13 uh, we get uh, if we use 13 here we get this sum as 20 uh, 27 and if we use 12 we get obviously 26 so 27 is the obvious answer here so uh, because uh, because 8 cannot be further like incremented and 6 also cannot be incremented as we see here but 12 can be and uh, we miss we miss this 12 as 13 if we uh, don't use dynamic programming so that's why uh, in dynamic programming we form an array and we ensure that uh, every value has the maximum value that it can attain like in each of the block like for every value the maximum value is stored in this array so that can be ensured using the dynamic programming that's why this problem has 
been solved using dynamic programming so uh, this problem was uh, solved using uh, dynamic programming and it was a pretty basic problem we used dynamic programming and uh, we used iteration method in this uh, which uses an array and you use a for loop and set the every element uh, to the most optimum number that you want from the beginning and you get till n and while you reach n you already have the optimum number that you want at n so uh, this was our video for today uh, keep watching our videos if you like this video please hit the like button please subscribe to our channel we'll be making more videos on dynamic programming and on more complex stuff from now on uh, we have taken a medium problem for now so we are uh, looking for more serious problems and so just stick with us uh, we'll be making more videos for you guys uh, please support us please like and share this video